Seven Lamb Productions presents Atlas Avenue B Case 2 The Red Letter Part 3 The Village Bicycle Wait, what? Live here with you? Why? I would like to make sure that my case is the one that takes priority. Miss Good, I don't think I could just drop everything like that. I have an office, a secretary, a home. Plus, I don't know how long a case like this could take. Missing people is one thing. Finding dead people is another. Well, I have my suspicions. Of? Who could have sent that letter? The letter she referred to was a letter given to her by her dead fiancé. How about we just do this the old-fashioned way? You received this letter last week, right? Yes. No return address. The writing looked like his, but my fiancé is dead. I saw his coffin go into the ground. Okay, so suspicions? Who? You really do not want to take me up on my offer? I don't think it's something I can do. Right. Thank you for coming, Mr. Locke. Shell Jake will show you out. Wait. I know this is sudden. I will give you some time to think about it. One week. I have one week to think about it? No. You have two minutes and 46 seconds to think about it. That's the length of the song One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies. I judge all of my lengths of time using 90s rock songs. That's not enough time. I need at least a few free birds. I don't understand. What are you trying to say? Mr. Locke, she specifically stated 90s rock songs. God... Okay, I need a few November rains. Oh, so 26 minutes and 45 seconds will suffice? How do you do that so fast? Is that the amount of time you need to decide? I would like more. You mentioned one week earlier. No, you mentioned the Bare Naked Ladies song. I mean you mentioned needing an actual week. Yes, like a normal person would. Okay. How about I give you 500 Alives, 300 Creeps... 600 under the bridges, 400 losing my religions, and a wonder wall. Uh, what does that calculate to? Next Friday at 5. So, one week? Yes, but not the Bare Naked Ladies song. Of course. Good day, Mr. Locke. Would you like me to show you out? No, I'm fine. And Sheldrake, you owe me 14 more questions. Are we really still doing this? Yes, and now it's 13. Good day. Sheldrake mentioned questioning me a total of 20 times, although it was more an exaggeration. Regardless, I'd get the full 20 questions he owed me. It was more of a power play than anything, because something was off with Sheldrake. I don't know what, but I would find out. Instead of calling for a cab, I hit the bus stop. And by hit, I do not mean punch. I didn't punch the bus stop. A bus arrived shortly, and I was on my way back to the office. Sheldrake? Sheldrake! Yes, Miss Good? Sheldrake, what did you think of Mr. Locke? He's a smooth talker, but he lacks depth. Do you think he could help me? Perhaps. I do not know his skills. He was trying to up me, though. That I did know. Up you? He does not trust me. Should he? You know me. Do you trust me? You know I do. I liked him. I think he could help me. Do you think he will take you up on your offer? There's not a doubt in my mind. Then I hope we can solve the letter situation. I know how it troubles you. Deeply. I should get back to the dishes now. Sheldrake, I'm feeling randy. Let's hump like Serengeti rodents. If you wish, will we be role-playing? Yes. Director and misbehaving actor. 
No, we did that yesterday. Bartender and the drunken slut. No, we did that the day before. Nerd and the call girl. No. Simba and Mufasa. That was last week. Good, that one creeps me out. That is just because you do not like big cats. No. Simba is his son. It's not right. What about Bill and female Ted? Can I be Bill this time? You know you can't. Fine. I'll get the strap on. Good. I'll get my black vest and meet you by the cardboard phone booth. As you wish. After Julianne's, I headed for the closest toy store, where I picked up a Barbie for Paul's daughter's birthday. At four o'clock, I headed for Paul's home. There he is. What's that in your hand? Holy shit, Jimmy Jones. Did you buy me a present? This is for your daughter. Fine, I didn't want that shit anyway. Are you offended? No, that that's fine. Buy something for my daughter, even though you and I have known each other for longer. I get it. Just don't expect me to buy you anything ever. <sighs> Can I just come in? I guess. Don't buy me a present, but then you want to come to my house like you own the place. What was that? Nothing. I followed Paul to the backyard. There were several families mingling, parents watching kids play tag and throw water balloons. Sorry I'm late. It's okay. I'm still pretty pissed about the present thing, though. Paul, it's your daughter's birthday. Oh, so you can't buy two people gifts? Isn't me just being here enough? I want something tangible. And since I don't know what that word really means, and because I don't like citrus, I'd rather just have something I can touch. Paul, what if I just gave you what's in my pocket right now? Hmm. Which one? You pick, but the back pocket is off limits. That's where my wallet is. Shit. Okay. Uh, fr- front left. Uh, no, my left. No, wait, your, le- your left. Which one, Paul? That one. Here you go. A lighter, a mint, Julianne Good's phone number. Happy? Sweet. Actually, I need to keep the phone number. You said I get to have what's in the pocket. Paul, you don't even know Julianne Good. So? I collect phone numbers. You have a cell phone. I collect them specifically on paper. Can't you just write down the ones in your phone then? Stop confusing me. Fine. Keep it all. Whatever. Yes. I'm going to go store these cool presents in my secret shoebox of goodies. These things are so awesome. Thanks, Jimmy Jong. Paul ran into his house and into the bedroom. Late as usual. Hello, Arthur. How's it going, Big Jimbo? My best friend? Don't call me that. We're not friends. Did you tell Paul yet? Yeah. You did, huh? You told him you were sleeping with his wife? Keep your voice down. I told him. So if I asked him when he comes back outside, he'll say he knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't ask him. Why? Because he said he didn't want anybody asking him questions today. That is such a lame excuse. No, it fucking isn't. That's a good excuse. Don't try to catch me in my own web of lies. So you are lying. God damn it, I'll tell him. Just not here. It's Rebecca's birthday, for Christ's sakes. You better do it. I'll fucking do it. Just lay off, you big piece of shit. I thought I was your best friend. Suck my balls. Arthur stormed off. It was that moment I noticed many of the men at the party hanging around Paul's wife Lorraine. They were laughing and playfully hitting each other. What was this I was seeing? Oh. It's you again. Hello, Ronald. Where's your sister? I want to give her a present. She's over there, staring at the corner of the fence. Paul and Lorraine had some pretty odd kids. Ronald had a British accent, and I was pretty sure Rebecca was possessed by a demon. She's just uh, staring at the fence. She's talking with her friends, Beelzebub. Beelzebub? The devil? The what? Nothing. Here, why don't you give her my present? All right, yo. I wasn't about to fucking go over there next to female Damien. Let her brother do it. That little girl was going to kill someone someday. Paul came back outside with a cake in hand. Hey, Jimmy Jones, someone's knocking on the front door, but I got my hands full and I'm lazy. Can you get it for me? Sure. (laughs) 
Oh, uh, hi. Is Lorraine here? Yeah, are you here for the party? Party? What party? Oh shit! Is it one of those orgies? I'm down. The man came inside and started taking off his shirt. Whoa, whoa, it's a birthday party. Are there strippers here? It's a kid's birthday party. Who are you? I'm Frank. Who are you? James. Oh, shoot. I have the wrong day, don't I? It's Friday. Shoot. I was th- For some reason, I was thinking it was Saturday. Wrong day for what? Actually, are you scheduled today? I say we tag team. You DTF? I don't have the internet. No, down to fuck. What? No, put your shirt back on. Come on, I hear she's into that sort of thing. Who? You know, Lady Eve. Lady Eve? I know she has a lot of street names. Lady Eve, Sugar Tush, Big Wheels, Claptrap. I'm not a fan of the last name, though. Lorraine? Yeah, her. I turned around to see Lorraine through the window, eating a big piece of cake. Oh, shit. At that exact moment of my realization, Paul came sauntering up, played a cake in hand. Jimmy John, I got you an end piece, because I hate that shit. There's grass in it. I dropped it on the ground. Thanks. Twice. Paul, I, I think we need to talk. We are talking. No, in private. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Can you go stand in the corner of that room while I talk to my friend in private? Yeah, no problem. I'll be by the potted plant. That's a good spot. Paul, I have some shocking news and you need to hear it. Do you know how I can save a bunch of money on my car insurance? No. Because I keep trying to talk to all the lizards outside and none of them will give me a goddamn estimate. Paul, please. What is it, Jimmy Jong? I don't know how to say this. Need me to help you? How are you going to help me say this? Tell me what you want to say and I will help you sound it out. I know how to say the words, I just don't know how to tell you. Just say it. Like a band-aid, real fast. I had a scratch on my dick one time, and when I yanked off the band-aid, my dick hurt, but the scratch was gone, and I was happy about it. Paul, stop talking for a minute. This is important. (sighs) You were right about someone sleeping with your wife, but it wasn't me. It was... You son of a bitch! Arthur burst into the dining room. It was that guy. His name is Frank. He said he's been with your wife. Oh, shit, yeah. Big Jimbo's right. It was that guy. He's the one sleeping with your wife. What? Thanks for covering for me, Jimbo. We could be best friends again. Sorry I told you to suck my balls. I didn't mean it. I mean, unless you want to do it, then (laughs) by all means. Stop talking. Jimmy Jong, I think I get what you're saying. What is there to get? I just told you what's going on. Are you trying to yellow bass me? I think you mean red herring. Don't try to distract me with another fish. I'm not distracting you. Jimmy Jong, I'm only going to ask you this once. Are you sleeping with my wife? Oh, for fuck's sake, no. I've never slept with your wife. I'm probably one of the few guys here who hasn't. Well, me too. Right, buddy? Shut up, Arthur. I thought the party was outside. (laughs) Lorraine! Yes, dear? Hey, Lorraine! Frank, what are you doing here? By the potted plant? Those guys, I I don't know. They asked me to wait in the corner. It's a good spot. Oh, um... Lorraine, I need to ask you a question. Are you sleeping with Jimmy Jong? No. Paul! Sorry, sorry. Oh. Are you sleeping with uh, Frank? Is that, is that your name? Sure is. Don't wear it out. Your name? Yeah. I don't want to have to go through any more names this week. I get you. I, uh... Frank. Uh-oh. You're getting close to wearing it out. Sorry. Are you sleeping with my wife? Whoa, you're married? I, um, don't... Hey, I didn't know she was married. I just had sex with her after I met her on the street. You're a... You're a prostitute? No, I don't get paid. You do that shit for free? She's known around town as the village bicycle. Everyone's fucked her. That's not how that goes. I can't believe you had sex with other people. Why so hurt, Arthur? I'm I'm just sad for Paul. How many people have you had sex with? Today? Oh, Jesus, really? That many? I'm sorry, honey. Two minutes later, the party was over and everyone was ushered out. Paul had packed a suitcase and now stood at the front door. Ronald and Rebecca ran over to him. Lorraine and I shared an awkward glance as Paul got on his knees and talked to his kids. Kids, come here. I have to tell you something, okay? Your mom and I aren't getting along right now, so Daddy is going to leave for a while. But Daddy, why must you leave? The main reason is your mom is a total whore to fuck strangers on the street. Paul, not to the kids. Oh, all right, all right. The thing is... 
We're just having a fight. Things will work out. I promise. Really, Daddy? Yeah, as long as your mom can lay off the cock. Paul! I know, I know. Anyway, I'll be back, okay? I'm not leaving you. So do not blame yourselves, kids. Although I'm sure from time to time you saw some strange men entering the house. And, you know, to fuck your mom. And you never told me. And that shit is your fault. We'll let it slide this time. We should go. Right. Ronald, Rebecca, you be good. And just remember, I love you. And not in the same way your mommy loved your daddy. If that were the case, I would just be saying that I love you. But in actuality, I would be out on the street passing my pussy around like it was some goddamn office flash drive. Paul, let's go. I always wondered why your mom's snatch was looser than a lunch meat sandwich. Paul! Okay. Bye, kids. Bye, whore. And with that, we were out of Paul's house. He didn't even look back. I didn't know what Paul's plans were, but I knew he didn't want to stay here. Something told me he was going to be staying at my place for a while. (sighs) This should be fun. Atlas Avenue Beat, written by Robert M. Lamb, edited by Dylan Whitehead, starring Jack Austin as Locke, Amy LeRae as Edith, Jose Caraballo as Paul, Brian Messick as Arthur, Gina Coyle as Julianne, Lucas Webley as Sheldrake and Dr. Doctor, and Stacey Patrone as Jane. Co-starring Robert M. Lamb, Alexander Dotti. Gareth Thomas, Hope Annis, Dylan Whitehead, Shannon McCarthy, Ricky Lehner, Shannon Lee, Seth York, Amber Simpson, Chris Davis, Ashley Cartesano, and Curtis Edwards. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. Also, check out www. Dot sevenlamb.com for other podcasts such as this one. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash seven lamb podcasts and on Twitter and Instagram at seven lamb podcasts. This has been a Seven Lamb production.